a really good miracle with my family. Uh, maybe two weeks ago, uh, my furnace went out. Mm-hmm. I just moved in the house. That's a blessing. I, I won't go into that, but <laughs> put $100 down, moved in in 30 days. We'll leave that alone. Wow. But um, <laughs> the furnace went out, and you know me being a new homeowner, I don't know what to do. So uh, I you went on YouTube. That's what we do. We go try <laughs> to find out what's wrong with the furnace. I purchased the pieces that I thought was wrong. I put it in, and it came on. So I'm like, thank you, Jesus. And then the hour later, went back out. So uh, <laughs> um, long story short, uh, my son has been in the hospital. We got to take him to the hospital pretty much once a week because he was born with an a, a, a ailment that the, the doctor said he had. But that's a whole other story. We'll leave that alone. <laughs> my son is at home. Hey, He's man. at home. He's and uh, so the furnace went out. And so uh, the man told me it was going to cost me $3,700. And uh, I was already laying on the floor, so I just passed out. <laughs> uh, um, so the, the doctors and the social worker, they call and they tried to, you know, just checking in with the family as they do every week. And my wife's like, you know, my son is... Uh, well, tell them, tell them what you, you said. Oh, you yeah, yeah, I'm going to tell them what. Um, my wife, uh, mm-hmm. when he told me that, I went upstairs to tell my wife. And, you know, I, she's very emotional. I love her, but she, she would break down with $3,700 out of nowhere. So I just told her this, you know, in my head, I'm like, oh, my God, what are we going to do? I said, God, that ain't, that ain't nothing for God. But in my head, I'm like, Jesus, you got to work this out. <laughs> but I heard something say, say it again. Uh-huh. And so I said, $3,700 is nothing for God. Uh-huh. And I meant it. <laughs> and <laughs> 10 minutes later, 10 minutes later, the, the, when the social, social worker called, and she's like, how you guys doing? My wife's like, my husband just told me, you know, he's trying to figure things out. Our furnace is going out or has went out. She said, you know what? Send us the bill. We're going to take care of it. <laughs> I said, glory be to God. God is in the, he's a miracle worker. So if you got something that you're believing in, when you say it, just put your faith behind it, and it will, it will come to pass. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, your words have power. When he shared it with me, it really blessed because he said, when I, when I said it the first time to my wife, I, just, I was just, you know, trying to calm her down. He said, and then the, the spirit rose up in him and said, no, say it and believe it. And he spoke it in faith and 10 minutes later, paid in full. Say, my words have power. That's awesome. And, and that's what Mark eleven twenty two 22 through 23 is all about, the power of your words. And that's what we've been dealing with. And uh, I know that it's been really changing the lives of us as we hear these teachings. We discovered how significant words are. We understood that, so went into the Word of God, discovered that the first image we have of God is that he's a being that speaks and whatever he says, he sees. Amen. We look further in the word of God and saw how the people of Babel were building a great tower to the Lord. And uh, they were able to build that tower because they came in, into agreement with their words. And God came down to see what they were building. And in order for God to shut them down because they were building that tower not for God but for themselves, God confused their tongues. So he, he's speaking to the power of the tongue. We also discovered in the book of Acts, second chapter of Acts, the first part of the body, the human body that the Holy Spirit took control of when he came on them in that upper room, the first part of the body that he took control of was what? The tongue. They began to speak with other tongues. Your words have power. Amen. We have to watch what we say. Jesus said over the book of Matthew that the day of judgment will have to give an account for every idle, careless, non- non-productive words that have come out of our mouth, which teaches us that words have significance and words have power. And then last week we discovered that God is attentive to our voice. So when we speak, we know that God is listening to us because we're his children. Amen. And and we went over in the book of Genesis and looked at the account of Hagar and Ishmael. Ishmael was Abraham's son or his seed and how his mom, he and his mom were in the wilderness, in the desert. They were out of water. The mom started crying 
and Ishmael started crying. God didn't hear the mama, but he heard Ishmael. He said, the boy's crying. I heard the boy crying. Why did he hear the boy? Because the boy was Abraham's seed. And then we discovered over in Galatians chapter 3 that because we're in Christ, we are Abraham's seed. So God is waiting and attentive to hear our voice. Amen. God is listening to your words. Say that out loud. Say, God is listening to my words. Say it again. Say it one more time. I'm going to show you God is attentive to our words. Go very quickly to Daniel chapter 10, uh, verse 12, Daniel 10 and 12, and put it up in the New King James Version, in the New King James Version. You all know we, we touched on this just for a little bit last week, and I'm not going to stay here long today, but just want to reinforce the confession that you made that God is listening for your words. Uh, Daniel had saw a vision and he prayed for an answer to it and, and the angel came to give him the answer and in Daniel 10 and 12 it says then he said to me this angel speaking to Daniel do not fear Daniel for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God your words were what heard so Daniel's words were what heard God heard the words of Daniel let's look at another passage of scripture go to John chapter 11 uh, and let's begin at verse 40 John chapter 11 verse 40 put this one up in the amplified version this is Jesus standing uh, in before the tomb of Lazarus before he had him roll the stone away and uh, in the amplified version John 11 and 40 it says, uh, it says uh, Jesus said to her, he, he's talking to, to, to Lazarus' sister, did I not tell you and promise you that if you would believe and rely on me, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, listen to what he said, Father, I thank you that you have what? Heard, heard me. Now look at this, verse 42. Yes, I know you always hear and what listen to who to me now Jesus is the firstborn but that means he's not the only born y'all catch that some of y'all caught that so if, if God is attentive to the voice of the firstborn then he's attentive to the voice of the second the third the fourth the fifth and the billionth of the born so we can say like Jesus, God, I know that you heard me, and I know that you always hear and listen to me. Now, what's the point I'm trying to make here? You need to get to a place, and all of us do in our life, where we believe that God is listening to us. When we speak, God is listening to to our words he's listening to the words that are coming out of our mouths we got to train ourselves to, to 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 have it settled in our spirit that my words are not idle that when i speak them god is listening 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 to my words paying attention to what i say now as you begin to develop your faith in that area, what it's going to do is cause you to begin to really watch what you say. Got it? Why? Because God doesn't just hear and listen. He always hears and listens to your words. He's tuned in to his children. And, and I'm, I'm sharing a little something the Holy Spirit shared with me because I've been meditating on this. And... Uh, uh, God, he spoke to me, the Spirit of God spoke to me. He said, one of the purposes of God being so attentive to the voice of his children is because his children are his representatives on the earth. All right? And God wants, he wants control of this whole world. But the only way he can get control of the earth is through us. And so he's attentive to our voice, waiting to hear us speak what he says so that he can take a little bit more territory down here. Somebody caught it. So every time we speak his word, it gives him the opportunity to take more ground. That's why he's always listening to what we are saying. 
Amen. Say, God always hears me. And he's always listening to me. <laughs> this is some powerful, it's powerful. So now the next, the next uh, principle here that we need to understand about our words is that God is listening to our words for the purpose of responding to them. God listens to my words for the purpose of responding to them. He's listening to what I say so that he can respond to my words. He heard Stetson say, God's going to cover this furnace. He heard him say it, and he wasn't just eavesdropping. See, God ain't nosy. He's listening because he wants to re. Spine. And response in the case of God means that he wants to react through action based on what you say. God wants to do something about what you say. Are you got it? You got it? Now let's go back real quick to Daniel now. Pro I'm going to prove this to you. Uh, go back to Daniel 10 and uh, verse 12 in the New King James. Daniel 10 verse 12. I'm working at Projective Ministry. I'm working, y'all. But y'all good. Y'all up for it. I just prophesied over you. <laughs> so look at what it says. The angel speaking it to Daniel, he said to me, do not fear Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard. Now look at the next line. And I have come because of your words. Now put that up in the Amplified. Can you put uh, Daniel 10, 12 up in the Amplified? All right, let's go to the end there. It says, your words were heard, and I have come as a consequence of and in response to what? Your words. So God isn't just, he not just listening, he intends to respond. He intends to respond. This is really good teaching. This is good. I'm going to tell you something. Most folks in church don't hear this when, when they hear about confession they hear about confessing their sins but I'm telling you your words have the ability to produce some powerful things for your life God is listen that's why you got to be careful about what you say when you get frustrated you gotta watch your words you got it don't just say what you think because your words have power amen your words go into the spirit realm they have power amen so I got to watch what I say because God is listening to what I say and he listens for the purpose of what y'all doing real good this side did real good I didn't hear nobody on this side God is listening to my words for the purpose of that was better Really, I wonder, I wonder how you would talk if you believed it. I wonder what kind of words would be coming out of your mouth if you really believed that statement that I just made. That God is, he's attentive because he wants to do what he hears you say. Now, I'm going to prove it to you. We've seen it in a couple of places already. But I'm showing it to you even more in the Word of God that, that what I'm teaching you is the Bible. Amen. What I'm teaching you is Bible. Amen. And we as Christians believe the Bible. Amen. Not just giving you my opinion, I promise you. Amen. Let me show you how important your words are. Let's go, uh, let's go to the book of Luke, chapter 1. God listens for the purpose of what? Responding. Responding. <laughs> okay. Hmm. I better go to Genesis first. I better go to Genesis first. Genesis chapter 18. Release your faith. We're going we gonna to get out. At a very reasonable time. <laughs> you didn't say it. <laughs> I know. I'm going to take you to a passage of scripture that that you that you've read 
and heard taught. But I'm going to show you this principle that I'm teaching you, that God is attentive to your voice. He's listening to what you say for the purpose of responding to what you say. So this is the account. You know, God and uh, a few angels came down to visit Abraham. And uh, they visited Abraham and, and you know, and they, they spoke. One of, you know, God spoke and said, you're going to have a child and, you know, and this and that. And then uh, when they got done with the conversation, uh, the angel started walking away. And then God said, should I hide from Abram what I'm about to do? The angels were headed to Sodom and Gomorrah. All right. And uh, Abraham, when, when, when God revealed to him that the angels were going to Sodom and Gomorrah because the city was wicked, and for the purpose of destroying it, Abraham remembered that he had a relative living in Sodom. Lot lived there. All right? And uh, so let's pick up at verse 22. And we're dealing with God is attentive to your voice and he's listening to your words for the purpose of? Very good. Purpose of responding. Uh, you're going to see it in a different way here, this passage. It says, the men turned away and went towards Sodom. That's the angels. But Abraham remained standing before the Lord. And then Abraham reproached, approached him and said, this is after God told him what the angels were getting ready to do. Abraham approached him and said, he's speaking to who? God. Will you really sweep, uh, it said, will you sweep away the righteous with the wicked? Uh, what if there are 50 righteous people in the city? Will you really sweep it away and not spare the place for the sake of 50 righteous people in it? Verse 25, far be it from you to do such a thing. He's talking to God. To kill the righteous with the wicked, treating the righteous and the wicked alike. Far be it from you. <laughs> He's talking to God because he wants God to respond to what he's saying because his nephew is there. Y'all got that? Now, look at God's response. Verse 26, the Lord said, if I find 50 righteous people in the city of Sodom, Sodom I will spare the whole place for their sake. <laughs> now, let me ask you a question. Where did God get the number 50 from? God didn't tell Abraham to ask me to spare it for 50. Those words came from and God and then God. This is powerful stuff. This is powerful. Because Abraham is, he's just talking. <laughs> so Abraham said, hmm. I know it ain't 50 righteous people there. I just, I just floated that one up there just, just to see if I'd get a bite. And it turns out God took it. He responded to my request. Just, he responded exact to exactly the request that I made him. He responded to it exactly what I said. God said, okay, I'll do what you said. I heard you and I'll do what you said. <laughs> 27. And Abraham spoke up again. And he said, now, uh, now that I've been so bold as to speak to the Lord, now that I've been so bold as to Though I'm, look at it night, now false humility sets in. Though I'm nothing but dust and ashes, better watch your words. You might end up being dust and ashes, boy. <laughs> Verse 28. What if the number of the righteous is five less than 50? Will you destroy the whole city because of five people? If I find... 45 there. I will not destroy it. Where did God get the number 45 from? He spoke it, God heard it, and God re. 
I know y'all heard this preach probably a bunch of times, but you ain't never seen this. The power of our, we got to watch what we say because God is listening for the purpose of responding. All right, 29. Once again, he spoke. This is getting good. I see a pattern. So what is he re realizing? God wasn't just listening to the first thing I said. He, he listened to the second thing I said, which means there's a pattern here. I think he's going to listen to everything I say. And whatever I say, he's saying, okay. So maybe I need to say something else because I know it ain't no 45 righteous people in Sodom. He says, what? He says, uh, what? 29. Once again, he spoke. What if only 40 are found there? He said, for the sake of 40, I will not do it. Everything this man is saying, God is saying, I'll do it. Then he said, may the Lord find, uh, not be angry because he feel like he's pushing it now. He thinks, you know, now I, I, I got God to come down from 50, you know, and uh, I'm, I kind of feel like I'm pushing it. See, that's how men think. Men think that we're pushing God to a limit. God has no limits. <laughs> he said, uh, uh, 30, may the Lord not be angry. Let me speak. What if only 30 can be found there? He answered, I will not do it if I find. Where's God getting the number? Somebody catching this. I ain't going to bother God with that. I ain't going to bother God with something like that. Like that. I, I, want, I want a, a husband, but I don't want to bother God with, with that. And then, you know, I, I, maybe I'll ask him for a husband, but I won't be greedy. I won't tell him I want to find one. I don't want to bother God with... <laughs> How about this one? You know, my business is making a profit. My business is making a profit. And uh, so I, so the Apostle Paul said, I've learned to be content. No matter what state I find myself. So I don't want God to think I'm greedy and ask him to double my profits. Somebody said triple. Somebody catching it. God, I want you to double my profits. Come on, if Abraham can go from 50 to 30. Let's keep getting this principle. It's right here in the Word. He says, uh, uh, he said, if I find 30, I'll spare it. Look at this. Now that I've been so bold as to speak to the Lord, <laughs> what if only 20 can be found? For the sake of 20, I will not destroy it. Where's the number coming from? Amen. Then 32, may the Lord not be angry. Now look at this. Look at this. May the Lord not be angry, but let me speak just... Some of y'all didn't catch it, some of you did. He put a limit. Who put the limit? Not God. Abraham put a limit on his request. Now, everything he's asked God up to now, God has agreed. Now, he just asked God, let me ask you only one <laughs> So when he said, I'm only going to ask you one more thing, God's response is, 
You got one more. I'm going to prove to you that that's true. So he said, uh, what if only 10 he answered for the sake? Look at, so he said, what if only 10 can be found there? He answered, for the sake of 10, I will not destroy it. Well, that was your last request because you said, out of your mouth, I'm only going to ask you one more time. God didn't tell him you only get one more request. Abraham said, I'm only going to ask you for one more time. And so he asked him, now go to the next verse. Let me show you. That God said he had to live by his words. 33, when the Lord had... <laughs> speaking with Abraham, he left. <laughs> it's deep. Abraham's word set the boundary. I believe with all my heart, God, Abraham could have took God all the way down to if, would you save the city for my nephew? Because God is listening for the purpose of responding. And everything the man said, God responded to. Now, I'm going to tell you, this principle transfers over into your life and your words. I didn't get a lot of claps. You can clap. Here's why you can clap. Here's why you can clap. No matter how many toe up words you've spoken in the past, you can start speaking some life building words today. And God will listen to you today, to the words that come out of your mouth today, and will start responding to those words. Because He's listening to us. Because we're his children. And he's not just eavesdropping. He wants to respond to you. I'm going to have to move. How important are your words? Luke chapter 1. You getting it? Yes. This helping you. Yes. If your wife burned the biscuits... Don't tell her she can't cook. Because you'll be getting burnt biscuits till the rapture comes. <laughs> Girl, I believe you're the greatest cook on the planet. Don't tell her she can burn. Girl, you can burn. Don't say that. That's not, the, that's not what you want to receive. If she does something you don't like, don't call her stupid. <laughs> don't do that. Don't do that. Because even if she's a genius, because you've spoken stupidity, all you'll see. You're brilliant. You're a genius. Words. Luke chapter 1, verse 11. The words of men, the words of men, humans, the words of humans, God responds to our words. Verse 11. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him. This is uh, Zechariah. He's the daddy of John the Baptist. Uh, the angel of the Lord appeared to him standing at the right side of the altar of incense. Y'all know Zechariah was a priest, went into the Holy of Holies. He was selected to go into the Holy of Holies to offer sacrifices. It says in verse 12, it says, When Zechariah saw him, the angel, he was startled and gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Look at the next line. Your prayer has been heard. 
your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son. So what do you think Zechariah was praying for? He was praying for a son. And the angel said, your prayers were heard and your wife's going to bear you a son. Where is this son? What was the source of the son? The words. My God. It was the words spoken in prayer that were heard. I want a son. God's response is, tell him he's going to have a son. Why? Because of his words. It's right here, folks. It's right here in the Bible. It's in your Bible. I challenge you to go home, study what I'm teaching you, and come back and tell me I'm wrong. You will not be able to. See, people are messed up, Christian folks. Because you know what? When, when they hear this type of teaching, you know, you got one faction of Christianity that says, who are we to think we can control God? I know my theology. For God is sovereign. And who are we? To say we can control God because whatever he wills comes to pass, then they ain't studied their Bible. Because for them to say whatever he wills come to pass tells me they ain't studied their Bible. Because over the book of Peter it says it's not God's will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Yet folks in the book of Revelation said this folks going to hell. So somebody's perishing even though it's God's <laughs> See, folks try to trap me, but I've studied this thing out. I've studied it out. I've studied it out. <laughs> it's not controlling God. It is the spiritual laws that God has set in motion that he will not violate. He gave the earth to us, which means we have dominion, which means we speak. And because it's coming from us on the earth, you have dominion. Then God responds to what we say. Let me keep going. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That worship was good, though. That worship was worth it. That worship was worth it. Let's keep reading. So don't be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear a son. You're to give him the name John. He'll be a joy, delight to you. Many will rejoice because of his birth, for he will be great in sight of the Lord. He's never to take wine or other for a minute drink. He'll be filled with the Holy Spirit even from birth. Uh, many of the people of Israel will he bring back to the Lord their God. And he will go on before the Lord uh, in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of righteousness to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. So not only is this angel telling him you're going to have a son, he telling him, this, this boy that you about, your wife about to give birth to, he's serious. You, you would think Zachariah would jump up and say, hallelujah. Well, let's see what happened. Uh, verse 18 Zachariah asked the, duh, you're talking to a angel. <laughs> he asked, <laughs> how can I be sure of this? I'm in, what is he doing? I'm an old man. He's describing his. And not only am I old, I ain't going to bust Elizabeth out, but she well alone herself. I ain't going to call her old, but she well alone. Nineteen. The, ans the <laughs> angel answered, I'm Gabriel. I 
showed up in this room. <laughs> I'm hell a conversation with you. Ain't no door for me to come through. I just... He said, I stand in the presence of God. And I've been sent to speak to you, Jesus, and to tell you this good news. What good news? That God heard your prayer and said yes to your prayer. And you have the nerve to start talking about I'm old. And my wife is Oh, you have the nerve to question whether or not it can come to, you're letting words come. It was words that sent me to you. Now you're trying to speak words to send me back. How many blessings have you canceled? It's about what's coming out of here, folks. Because what's coming out of here is coming from your heart. Out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth is speaking. Look at this. Verse 20. Gabriel's talking. And now, you will be silent. And not able to to speak until the day this happens because you did not believe my words which will come true at their proper time. Now get this. This is powerful. This is powerful Bible. He says, son, you just like 99.999% of the population on this planet. You don't have a clue how powerful your mouth is. You go through the ritual of prayer because somebody said God listens to prayer, but you don't believe what you pray. You're praying, hoping for something, but not believing. And I know you're hoping because you just revealed after God spoke to you and told you your prayer was answered, you just revealed where your heart was. You started looking at yourself, started describing yourself instead of saying what God said. Now, here's the thing. In order to keep you from aborting this promise, because you can abort this promise with your mouth, I'm not not going to allow you to say another word out of your mouth because your words have power. You can say something and this boy won't ever show up on the earth. showed you in the word we are we have the God kind of faith we don't say what we we say what we want to and right here in Luke chapter 1 God is confirming this word he's showing you the only way for John the Baptist to make it to this planet is if I shut his daddy's mouth up Because if I don't shut his mouth up, I already see what's in his heart. <laughs> Seeing anyone says to the mountain, get up and go, be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes what he says. Well, the angel knew what he believed. So he knew what he was going to say because he knew what he believed. He believed he was too old to be a daddy. So I got to shut your mouth. And I can't tell you how many believers, me included, 
who have aborted the fulfillment of the promise of God's word by the words we have allowed to come out of our mouth. So you saved and you messed up. It can happen. The devil wants you to open your mouth and say, I'm not saved. He wants you to open your mouth and say, God can't use me. <laughs> Instead of you saying, if I confess my sins, he is faithful and just to forgive me of my sins and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. God ain't through with me. But how many people have spiraled right on out to church? Because the devil got them to Y'all stand up. We, we got to go. <laughs> Show up next Sunday. I'm going to take you to the shooter, Mike. <laughs> next week, I'm going to show you. Some things may have a name, but you could rename them. <laughs> <laughs> with your mouth every head bowed every eye closed please repeat this prayer everyone repeat this prayer with me especially those of you that are here today that don't really know where you stand with God not real sure about your relationship with him if you pray this prayer you will know without a shadow of a doubt that you're a child of God. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Repeat this prayer. Father God, you are the creator of heaven and earth, and you created me. You're God. I believe in you. Forgive me, Father God, for all of my sin. I need your forgiveness. But because I know you love me, I receive forgiveness now for all of my sin I'm forgiven all of my sins are forgiven Lord Jesus I believe in you you are the son of God you died for me but I believe God raised you from the dead you're alive Jesus so I ask you Lord Jesus come into my heart come into my life be my Savior. Be my Lord. I receive you, Lord Jesus, into my life now. Thank you, Jesus. I'm saved. I am saved. I am saved. Fill me with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Every head bowed every eye closed. If you prayed that prayer for the very first time, I'm not going to ask you to come up front, but if you prayed that prayer for the first time, every head bowed, every eye closed, just raise your hand at your seat. I prayed it for the first time. I see that hand. God bless you. I see those hands. Praise God for you. Amen. Amen. You can put your hand down. Maybe you're here today and you were saved, but today you repented and said, Father, forgive me for all of my sin." And when you ask him to do it, he forgave you. You rededicated your life. If that's you, raise your hand. I rededicated my life. Thank God for you. Amen, amen. Let's give God praise. Let's give him praise. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Praise God. I'm in a, a, a different flow here with the altar call because of my the time but this is good amen thank god we had about 10 folks either receive jesus or rededicated their life today amen
Now, would you all do this for me before you go home? Before you go home, if, if you prayed that prayer for the first time and you received Jesus, or if you rededicated your life, I'm going to have some folks, I'm going to ask my altar counselors to come forward now. Would y'all come forward? And uh, they're standing up here at the front. If you prayed that prayer and you received Jesus or you rededicated your life, please come and let them know. We want to get some information in your hand and, uh, and just thank God for you. Amen. Praise God. So our altar workers are up front here. Uh, y'all could get in your regular spots. Yeah, y'all can get in your regular spots. Thank you. Uh, first time guests, I want to release you right now to go to our hospitality center. If someone invited you, they're more than welcome to go with you. Uh, with all of our first time guests, if you're, uh, would you would please gather your belongings, just come out into the aisle and come forward again. If anyone invited you, they're welcome to go with you and uh, just make your way forward. Let's welcome our first time guests as they come forward at this time. Amen. Come on, make them feel welcome. Amen. Praise God. Praise God, our guests are coming. Make them feel welcome as they come. Thank you so much for being with us today. Bless you. If you would like uh, to attend membership, new members class, or maybe fill out that card in your bulletin to become a member and you want to get your membership card, you can get your membership card today. If you have any questions about being a member, please see the brother all the way over to my left. See him after we dismiss. He can answer any questions you have about being a member here at Embassies of Christ. It's really easy. Amen. If you have a testimony, and we've had some great ones, uh, please share your testimony. We had uh, uh, Faith Talk on Wednesday night, and Faith Talk came from testimonies that uh, you all have been giving Maisha. Please bring your testimony to her. She'll be up front to take your testimony. Don't forget, we'll have a, a meeting uh, with our non African American members immediately following second service. So if you can stay, we'd love for you to be a part of that meeting with us. Don't forget, healing and deliverance service is this Wednesday night. If you know anyone who's under attack, the enemy's attacking their body, they got health challenges, or emotional challenges, any, bring them out on this Wednesday night uh, to our healing and deliverance service. Amen. Is that it? Am I good to go? Amen. Praise God. Y'all say I got something up here? I do. I sure do. Okay. Leadership class started today. Uh, if you signed up, they'll be meeting every Sunday at 745. We're going out evangelizing this Saturday. This Saturday. Going out witnessing. Uh, and we're honoring our veterans next Sunday. Uh, all vision, we used to call it all ministry planning day. It's all vision planning day. Uh, will be coming up on the 21st. And mark your calendar now, Thanksgiving morning at 9 o'clock, one hour service. No service on Wednesday night. Going to be an awesome, awesome time. Amen. And if you would be interested in becoming a bus driver uh, here at EOC, uh, where's Alicia? She's over there. She's up front waving a hand. If you want to be a bus driver, come and see Alicia. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Thank you so much, Father, for your word today. And, Father, thank you that this word is changing our lives. Thank you for showing us the power of our words. And, Father, thank you even with the testimony that, that we began this message with today. You're confirming your word with signs and wonders. Father, let us order our words, order our mouths. Let us speak your word out of our mouth and see that word come to pass in our life. As we leave this place, release your angels to go before each and every one here. Provide safe passage as we go to our homes and our various destinations. Father, we thank you. We'll return to give your name praise. And Father, we call the people in this place blessed and highly favored of you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. You're dismissed. Hug three folks. Say, only say what you want to see. <laughs>